Hi guys. This uh, is going to be something interesting because I come up with this uh, kind of crazy idea that I would like to try to post one video on YouTube every single day. And uh, it's it's scary, yeah? It's kind of scary, but uh, it's a challenge and I have no idea for how long I will be able to do it, but I'm going to try it. I hope it will be more than seven days. And if I if I keep doing it for like 30 days, it's like, oh. In this video, what I would like to post, I would like to speak about tips for uh, schematic and uh, schematic design and PCB layout. And uh, the main reason why I come up with this idea is because uh, Maybe you know, some time ago I started writing a book, this one. Tips for schematic design and PCB layout. And uh, it's hard. Writing a book is hard. And many times I, I'm worried that when I will finish it or if I will finish the, this book. And uh, it's a kind of sad because I put there a lot of stuff inside this book. Like, have a look. It it has 80 pages and it has uh, around uh, 200 tips for hardware design. And I don't want uh, these, all these tips just sitting somewhere on Google Drives. I think it would be much more useful if I try to share them through YouTube. And this way uh, I will also get some kind of feedback from you. I will see if uh, you actually like these tips, if you find them useful, if you keep watching the videos. And uh, if I see this positive feedback, it means uh, I should really continue writing this book and I should finish it. If, uh, if no one is watching it, it just doesn't make sense to continue writing the book. I can do something else. Yeah? So please, if you like the videos, uh, keep watching them. Yeah, you can subscribe, watch them, like them. It gives me the energy to finish the book and maybe release it once. I don't want to make money on this book. It's uh, not going to be expensive and be sure I don't. I really don't want to earn money on this book. I'm doing it because I think uh, I know a lot of stuff and it's kind of shame just not share it with other people yeah so i would like to share it through the book and now maybe through the videos so the first thing what uh, i would like to speak about the first tip which i selected from the book almost randomly <laughs> is this one you can have crosstalk even on a board running at a low frequency it's a very important reminder for everybody yeah. Many people think that crosstalk only happen when you are doing or when you are using very high speed uh, interfaces and when you are routing very high speed boards. It's not true, okay? Crosstalk does not depend on frequency. It depends on how sharp the edges of signals are. First, I need to mention what crosstalk is because maybe some people, they, they are new in this uh, topic. So the crosstalk is kind of uh, noise with, which can be generated or which is generated around the track on your PCB. And this noise can influence the other tracks on your PCB. Yeah? So for example, if you have a clock uh, signal routed on your PCB like this, yeah. And then close this clock signal, you have routed reset signal. And you run uh, the clock signal, it generates the noise, which can be picked up by the reset track. And this noise sometimes can be so high that uh, it can change the level on the reset signal. And it means, what it means, do you know? It means that sometimes the crosstalk can be so high that it can reset your board. It changes, for example, the reset level from high to low and it resets the board. And the point of this tip is 
that this is not going to happen only on very high speed boards. It can happen on your uh, 10 megahertz microcontroller board. It can happen even on on a GPIO pin. Yeah, when you route a GPIO with very sharp edge of the signal, I will speak about that. Uh, very close to a reset signal, and you change level on the GPIO with very sharp edge, it still can generate the reset. Or many times uh, what is very visible on uh, boards which are designed by uh, uh, by someone who is starting uh, with PCB layout, many times you see random interrupts. This is exactly the crosstalk. Okay? When I say sharp edge, what does it mean? So it doesn't depend on frequency, it depends how sharp the edge of the signal is. Crosstalk depends on speed of rising, falling signal edge. So it depends on the, uh, you know, deep, uh, imagine that you have a signal low and it changes to high. This is very sharp edge, yeah? It suddenly changes to high and it continues. This is what is something slower. This is low and it changes to high. This is slow signal. Which one is going to generate more crosstalk, more noise? You know, this one, this slow one, or this one which is very quick. This very quick one, okay? This will generate a lot of noise. And you may be surprised how, how much or how easy it is to design a PCB with a lot of crosstalk. Especially if you are designing two-layer PCB, it's going, the tracks on the two-layer PCB are going to generate a lot of noise. So be, be very careful, even if you are designing a slow microcontroller board, be aware how you route the tracks, how close you route them to each other. And if you like, have a look on a crosstalk calculator. Sometimes I use this one. It's a free software called PCB Toolkit from Saturn. And here is crosstalk calculator tab. Here you can put some numbers about your PCB, about your tracks, and you can calculate the crosstalk between the tracks. Have a look on this uh, topic. It's very interesting and it can be very useful for you. It can help you a lot during PCB layout.